Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the surprise number six overall pick of this year's draft, Daniel Jones of the New York Giants, as they take on the third-year man, Mitchell Trubisky, and the NFC North champion, Chicago Bears. With that, let's get out to venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Standing by with the call, here are Brandon Godden and Gerald Davis. Thank you, Coach. Soldier Field opened back in 1924 with the Bears becoming tenants in 71. And what a home field advantage it has become here in Chicago. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with the New York Giants. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And uh, before kickoff, Charles, quickly your keys to the game. Well, partner, I can give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. The Giants set to take over, and it's the man they call Danny Dimes who's leading him out, the rookie from Duke, Charles. It's Daniel Jones. Unfortunately, he's piloting a team that has six straight losses, but he continues to get better week in and week out. Four touchdown passes in their loss to the Jets. The second time this season, he's thrown for four. Only Deshaun Watson and Hall of Fame quarterback Fran Tarkenton did it three times in their rookie seasons. So there's one more out there for this young guy. Now just the third guy in the last 70 years to throw a touchdown pass in his first eight NFL games. The other two, Mike Glennon and Baker Mayfield. Throwing on first down, Jones finds his tight end, Ingram. Call it no gain on the game's first play, and it's second down now. And we take a look now at the New York offense. And we focus on maybe the ultimate home run hitter in the NFL today, and that's running back Saquon Barkley, because teams come into every game with the idea that they want to limit his production and especially his big playability. But how many times did we watch him in his rookie year where he would be limited throughout the game, and then all of a sudden there he goes out the back door. 50, 60, 70 yards. He's a lot of fun to watch unless you're trying to defend him. Looking to throw again on second down. Jones gets this out to Saquon Barkley. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix attracted a lot of attention when he was about to enter the NFL for his ability to play the football in the air. He's actually shown that he can tackle pretty well in the league, too. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Operating from the gun, Jones. Got a man, Slayton. Give him 18 there, and the Giants have a first down. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Jones throwing on first down. He's got his man. This is Tate. And he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at 148 yard line and ended at the other. A lot of eyes on Golden Tate this year to see if he can take over some of the production that OBJ had before he got shipped to Cleveland. You know, Beckham had 1,000-yard seasons four of his five years in New York. Golden Tate struggled at the end of last year in Philadelphia. 
but he had a really good run in Detroit, including 3,000-yard seasons in the middle of this decade. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 38-yard line. Okay, I'm not so great at math, but I just looked over at our statistician, Marvin, and he signaled to me five for five to get things started here on this opening drive. Where I come from, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, what do you do defensively to adjust? Well, this is where you've got to make a decision as, your defensive, as a defensive coordinator. Do you really get after the quarterback? Or maybe you tighten down on the receivers, bump them off of their routes, chip away at their timing so things aren't as precise as they've been so far in this game. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Jones. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. Here comes the seventh play in this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Jones now from the gun. He'll throw. Catch made by Slayton. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Darius Slayton, 34 yards. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback, Charles, you're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. Rosas good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive in total eight plays, and it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Rosas on to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Bears offense ready to roll here, and it's the beleaguered Mitchell Trubisky who gets the call at quarterback, Charles. And after a little bit of a slow start in Week 10 against the Lions, he came back to life a little bit. Ended up throwing three touchdown passes in their win. And those touchdown passes? more than he'd had in his last four games combined. They need more of that play if they're gonna make a run in the NFC North. <laughs> Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their 25 yard line. <laughs> Trubisky will throw. Able to find Shaheen here. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Giants have it. It's picked up. And this is taken into the end zone. A fumble recovery and a Giants touchdown. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Rosas now to add the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. 
The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The offense for Chicago coming back out here. Charles, this Bears team, they needed a win in Week 10 against Detroit, and they got it. That broke a four-game losing streak. Still some work to do, but Chicago now sits at 4-5. and five. Hard to believe that they're 4-5 and five after their 3-1 and one start. That win over Detroit, 20-13, to 13, and Mitchell Trubisky looked a lot better as the game went on. But now this team at 4-5, and five, you can't quite write them off. But they do have the Packers and the Vikings also winning. So the NFC North is really starting to get out of reach for them unless they put together a streak. I do like how they celebrated the win, though. Despite all the losses, they were right back in what they call club dub. After a W at home, head coach Matt Nagy leading the celebration and a huge game coming up. They go to L.A. and take on the Rams in Week 11. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now Trubisky to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. That's caught inside the 20. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Allen Robinson, 71 yards. As his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over. This game could be 88 and out the gate early. What, 88 and out the gate? Yeah. What's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. Usually meant that thing's done. Oh, well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. Extra point right down the middle. And that'll make our score 14 to 7. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Saquon Barkley. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards, good for a giant first down. 
That's something we saw over and over again in Barkley's rookie season. He had 91 catches last year, most ever by a rookie running back. Part of a fantastic rookie campaign that saw him go over 2,000 total yards. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Saquon Barkley. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 39, Jones finding Sterling Shepard for his first catch. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Could be four down territory, even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. That's into the hands of the tight end, Ellison. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Here we go, here we go. Jones now, Eight, 9 eight. of 11 passing in this first Let's half. Go, He's got his guys at first and 10. <laughs> Barkley. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Giant football, and we're ready to begin the second quarter as they've got it second and seven. run got three now here's second and seven throwing Jones it's hauled in by Shepard and he's gonna have another first down as the tackles made here at the Bears 18 they sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one they thought they were going deep ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage up second down it is tough to complete pass against zone defenses the windows that you see open they shrink pretty rapidly how about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball not easy for any quarterback no matter the situation and there the defense won the battle 
Jones to throw again. That's complete. He's got Barkley out of the backfield. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Now Jones from the gun on third down. That's complete to Slayton. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he finds Shepard. Touchdown, Touchdown Giants. Touchdown. Sterling Shepard there to make the grab. And the Giants are able to add on to their lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. PAT up and good by Rosas, and it's now 21-7. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. After the touchdown, here's Rosas on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now it's Trubisky. Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On second down, Montgomery. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. From the shotgun is Trubisky, sliding out of the pocket. He may try and run for this. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. So on fourth down, on is the punter Pat O'Donnell to kick it away. Back deep, Golden Tate. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And it'll be giant football first and 10. 
And New York set to take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They begin with a run by Barkley. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. The toss out to Barkley. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. A first down carry for Barkley. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. On second down, here's Barkley. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And Ingram hauls it in. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Back to throw. Jones. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again. Jones. He dumps it off to Barkley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. He's got good size. We know he's tough to bring down running the ball. That also carries over to the passing game like we saw there. And at his size, how'd you like to try and stop him on that angle route? Him coming out of the backfield, breaking sharply, catching the football. It's going to take a lot more than one guy, most likely, to bring him down. That was a nice game. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Ready, ready. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Jones. Operating from the gun. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Here we go. Eight, three. Right there. Keep it up, defense. 
Keep it up, guys. <laughs> Jones now on first and ten. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Second and five. And he's got it. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Jones from the gun, he'll throw. Pressure and he's taken down, a bear sack. It's a loss of four on what ought to be the final act of this first half. So we come upon halftime here with the visiting Giants out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here's the Bears' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. <laughs> we'll see if that script is a good one for them. Throwing here, Trubisky. Got a man open, it's Wims. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle? That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. He's got Burton here. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Trubisky finding the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. This one into the hands of Burton. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Trey Burton, 60 yards. As his guys are back within a single score. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A drive there of just four plays. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. And the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll try and get this run game going. This is Barkley. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it's just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. Looking for Shepard deep. And his throw intercepted by the all-pro corner, Kyle Fuller. You see me out here? That's right. Well, holding on to the lead at this stage in the second half, those are the types of plays you really want to try and stay away from. And when you're a rookie, keeping your focus is something that you still have to work on all the time because there's so many distractions around you between the crowd noise and your coaches and your teammates. But the other part, You've got to learn how to finish. It's the two Fs for a rookie quarterback. Mitchell Trubisky and the Bears set to begin their next drive. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your quarterback? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. 
When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And that'll bring up second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. Robinson's got it. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone, sometimes you're throwing it between the zone, sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told him, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. On first and 10, it's Trubisky toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. They'll run on second down with Cohen. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into Giant territory. The tackle made there by Dayon Buchanan. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Trubisky. Open man is Miller. He's got it. They convert on third with a gain of 22. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Trubisky now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and 10. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And his throw here is incomplete. Trey Burton, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, sling, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky. He's got his tight end, Burton. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Trey Burton. His second touchdown of the afternoon as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. 
Extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at 21. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and the end result is a Bears touchdown. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They'll need to regroup after the costly interception last time. It led to a tying touchdown. 21 all is where we stand, and they've got it first and 10. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 27. A give to Barkley out of the gun. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They'll run it again with Barkley. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. From the gun, Jones gets this out to Saquon Barkley. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He'll get 15 and a Giants first down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Come on, set, ten low ball. I got you, I got you. Now Jones on first down. He'll get this out to Barkley complete. It's a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. be able to run another play time has expired on this third quarter we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports second and five after the five yard completion on first down now Jones finds his tight end Ingram. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Come get some. Come out here. Come get some. Throwing Jones. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 let's go, let's at their own 21. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. Yes. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Play action. It's Trubisky. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They go play action. Trubisky. And his throw is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Second and 10, it's Trubisky again. And this is Gabriel on the catch. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. <laughs> Trubisky to throw again. Completes it to the tight end, Burton. Fourth down now after a loss of two. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. Saquon Barkley and the Giants offense set to kick off their next drive. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went into halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. A quick throw, here's Shepard. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. 
Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. This is Barkley. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. Well, I don't know if careless is the right word there, but bottom line, here in the fourth quarter tie game, you can't do that. You sure can, Brandon, and not only do you give up the lead, now you've got to turn around and punt it away from your own 20 as well. So it's really a double whammy with time starting to become a factor. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. This will be fielded at the 17. We play to win. Let's go. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. And remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. Now Trubisky on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That was very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up, second and 10. Quick throw here caught by Gabriel. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Pressure comes and Trubisky goes down. Alec Ogletree in there to get him for a loss of nine yards and that also leads to fourth down. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier and now he comes up with the sack here. No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. On the return, it's Tate. Call it a 48-yard punt. Give him nine, though, on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So now Jones and the Giants down by two. A minute 52 to play. A field goal would be a game winner as they come up on first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. He's back to throw. They'll complete this to Ingram is tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter, it's a good running back dive play. 
four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. He'll look to throw, and he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. The Giants are going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Slayton. First down, Giants on a pickup of 14. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. First down now, but the clock continues to move. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. That's complete to Slayton. A gain of six there on first. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. On the clock ball, rolling on the ball, as the Giants ball. will hurry to the line. He's ripped, he's ripped. Back to throw. Catch made by Slayton. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. They'll look to throw. A short throw to Ingram. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. At this stage, you've got to hustle. You've got to get back to the line of scrimmage because you're saving that timeout to make sure you have a chance to get your kicker out there for the big shot. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Baldrick Rosas now to try the Giants field goal. Now the Bears gonna call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Aldrich Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. This to almost certainly win the football game. And this one is right down Broadway. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And you know, in an era of cost-cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams, and in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street-free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. To the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This will be fielded at the eight. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. Look at the clock. Everyone knows the situation. Probably time here for one final play. 
And we know what that play is going to be. It's got to be some sort of Hail Mary throwing it towards the end zone and hoping someone can catch it or catch it off of a tip. Think back to 2015. Didn't we see Green Bay pull that off yep, twice absolutely. in the season? Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So stranger things have happened. It'd be interesting to see what the defensive strategy is about who they put on the field to try and knock that ball away. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Soldier Field.